Dr. Yeah, Dr. absolutely. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. And, and with a nice, you know, smaller group like this, I mean, typically we just run through our slide deck and then save questions for the end, but I'd be happy to make it more interactive. I've actually added a few different videos today. So if you have any questions along the way, just raise your hand, stop me, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. But uh, the title of our program is Hoots Chalk Talk, and we deliver them in two different venues. It's an assembly, and we also have an e-learning program. Uh, but we like to call it, you know, appearance and performance enhancing drugs. Because as I'll show you, the statistics will, will point to that it's no longer just the athletes that are using this, but it's also your other peers that are on campus, you know, using this stuff, not just to improve athletic performance, but to also, um, uh, you know, help, help their body type and appearance. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a quick video um, and, and let my dad sort of introduce why we're here. And this new PowerPoint is not the most cooperative. <clears throat> there are things that happen to you in life where you must stand up and do what's right. Taylor started playing t-ball when he was maybe five years old. Our family grew up around the ballpark. We moved to Texas and he was playing ball for a local high school. The coach told him, you need to get bigger. Taylor didn't want to just make varsity. He wanted to be the starting pitcher of the varsity baseball team and began injecting himself with anabolic steroids. Seven months after he started taking steroids, he died. It was going on right under our noses. And we didn't see it because we didn't know what to look for. This drug is serious enough to cause kids either to take their life like Taylor did, or in many cases to do tremendous damage to their hearts, and to their liver, and their kidneys. These are our best kids that are using drugs not to get high, not to escape. They're using them because they think that they're going to make them better. Our foundation is about education. Steroids are like any other drug. We need to be educating our children that they shouldn't be fooling with this stuff for physical reasons, for psychological reasons, and for ethical reasons. If we had known this much of what we know now, we could have recognized that we had a steroid user in our home. This is a national epidemic, and we must open our eyes Okay, so that's kind of an introduction, but uh, I lost my brother back in July of 2003, and uh, it took us about a year to file for a 501c3, but we formed the foundation in 2004 uh, with a mission to educate North America's youth on the uh, dangers of appearance and performance enhancing drugs with the ultimate vision of abolishing this uh, you know, type of behavior in middle schools, high schools, and colleges across North America. Uh, we're recognized as a national leader. Uh, you know, you, you might have seen my brother's story or you've probably seen my dad on various networks, CBS 60 Minutes, Sports Illustrated, uh, New York Times. Um, anybody in here big baseball fans? You might have watched the infamous 2005 congressional hearings. Um, you know, we were actually recommended by uh, Senator George Mitchell to visit every single professional baseball player and do a program, but with the, uh, with the union being the way it was, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't going to happen. Some of our partners, you know, we can't go any further without, you know, thanking your commissioner here for, you know, driving this education into every single one of your schools. Um, you know, we see you guys as a recognized partner and we'd like to share that with, you know, the rest of North America, but our primary sponsor is Major League Baseball, you know, I always get asked, I mean, it's, it's a really big step when they let you put your logo next to theirs on a shirt. Um, so I always get asked, do you play professional baseball? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not in that kind of shape, okay? But, uh, you know, work with the NCAA. Um, two of the teams that we work very closely with is the Texas Rangers in Arlington. Uh, they've sponsored programs versus taking their donations and putting into a big pot. We give it back to all the schools. We visited every single middle school, high school, and junior high in Arlington and delivered this program. And actually, uh, this afternoon, we're doing a fundraiser at Yankee Stadium. Their president, Randy Levine, sits on our board of directors. Uh, one of, uh, one of the, our silent partners is Alex Rodriguez, who will come up and visit and actually have dinner with some of the sponsors afterwards. So we've got... Uh, Programs happening all over the country. I'm actually leaving 
uh, this afternoon. I'm on my way to Kansas City for an event with the Royals tomorrow. We've already had Boston, uh, the Red Sox this week. We did a program with the Yankees yesterday. And as we speak right now, we're doing a program with the Washington Nationals. What's in it? We've had some athletes. Uh, we had a golfer send us something. And she was like, hey, I'm taking this type of supplement. I'm noticing this and that. Well, ultimately, the stuff came that um, had, it had steroids in it, is what she was taking. Okay. So be careful. Human growth hormone. This is a really interesting topic because, you know, like all these other drugs, they're miracle drugs. People are using this stuff. They think it's the fountain of youth. Again, it works. This stuff is designed to work. However, there are dangers to it. But what is human growth hormone? It's a hormone that we have in all of our bodies. It stimulates our growth, our cell production. Okay. Um, you know, this stuff is legal with the prescription. You know, if you've seen, you know, some of the children need this stuff to help grow. I know my fiance's cousin, um, she's got a little daughter that uh, was raised around alcohol abuse. She adopted her and she's having trouble growing and they're prescribing her human growth hormone, okay? Uh, but I I've had some college athletes come up and tell me, yeah, you know, my buddy, my buddy is using uh, human growth hormone. I say, well, what are you paying, you know, roughly what are you paying? Well, 300 bucks. It's not legitimate growth hormone. If you're using growth hormone properly, uh, prescribed through a doctor is extremely expensive. You need three shots a day. It's $25 a shot and it's a 30-day cycle. So you can do the math real quick. Unless you guys got an extra couple of grand laying around each month, that's what legitimate growth hormone costs. Growth hormone has some of the same side effects as the anabolic steroid. You know, just taking a look at some of these pictures here, severe headaches, loss of vision, acromyalgia, and you can see the guys here. It looks like his hand, you know, got run over by a car, all right? These are all different signs of uh, some of the side effects of human growth hormone. But again, crippling arthritis, high blood pressure, okay, and even heart failure. But let's talk about some of the other side effects here. And one of the interesting things is, is bodybuilding. And everybody has seen, you know, the guys and gals with the big puffed up chests. However, you know, I've had some of the people come up to this like, well, why is their stomach? It looks like they've got this big beer belly. You know, why is it protruding? when somebody that has, you know, 0% body fat. Well, what that is, is that's the tissue on the inside swelling. That's the internal organ swelling up and pushing the stomach outward, okay? So a lot of people are like, okay, now I get that, but that's one of the side effects of using this. It's fluid retention, okay? Tissue swelling, and site, you know, injection site reaction, okay? So that's why that's going on and what's sort of being described here in the bottom right-hand corner. So what are anabolic steroids? Okay, I don't want to get into a huge science lecture on what these things are, but let's just get a basic understanding. Okay, it's, it's no more than synthetic testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone, as you know, that's in all of us guys' body. It takes us through puberty. You guys all know what puberty is, right? If not, y'all got smartphones, you can Google it and check it out. It's pretty interesting, okay? So steroids are nothing more than synthetic or man-made testosterone. Okay, and you have two different types. The proper term for an anabolic steroid is what's called an anabolic androgenic steroid, or you've seen it called AAS, where you have your anabolic effect, which starts growing the muscles that you see on the outside. Okay, and you have your androgenic effect, which starts changing our genetic makeups, changing the males into females, and the females into males. And I'm gonna show you pictures and proof of that here as we go forward. But as a side note, as we talk to all your schools, we're not talking about corticosteroids, meaning if you take an inhaler or you have a rash, okay? Don't go, don't go try selling your roommate your corticosteroid cream that you use for your rash and say, hey man, you're gonna look like Barry Bonds when you get done, you know, or, or you know, taking 40 puffs on your inhaler hoping, you know, you're gonna make the starting squad on Saturday, okay? They, they don't work the same way, all right? But anabolic steroids were developed for legitimate medical reasons as well. Again, they're miracle drugs, they work, okay? If you've ever heard of hypergonadism, AIDS, cancer, okay, people that have these diseases where their muscles wither away, they're prescribed in small doses to help them live a normal life. But there's over 100 different types of pharmaceutical grade steroids. And I know a lot of you heard me mention 75% of the guys on my team were using, nobody ever tested positive. Well, if you're only testing for 10 or 15 pharmaceutical grade steroids, you are, the odds are already in your favor that you're gonna pass the test. But they also don't include what we're going to call our counterfeit or our underground steroids. The stuff that 80% of it's available on the black market to you and I that we're going to take a look at here in a minute. 
Methods of use, you have your oral form, which is a pill, okay? Just like if you're going to take a Tylenol or leave. Uh, you also have a dermal, which is the cream. If you guys can remember, um, what's his name? Mr. Barry Bonds, right? He told the media of his alleged steroid use that, you know, he was rubbing flaxseed oil or baby oil on his skin, and that's why, you know, he, he looked better at 40 than he did when he came into the league in his 20s. Um, but then, you know, the third most popular type, scary as it is, is an injection through needle and syringe, typically taken, you know, in, in the butt. Um, but I'm going to show you some pictures where some guys have taken that elsewhere. So what are our students really taking? Okay, um, you know, again, not, it's not pharmaceutical grade. What we know working with the DEA is 95% of these drugs are coming in from China. Okay, and they come in in a powder form just like you've seen here. I have had the opportunity to take a look into some of these evidence rooms. It just comes in a cardboard box and a plastic bag. Okay, so you're sitting here thinking to yourself, you're like, well, Don, you just told me most of the people inject this stuff. How do you inject the powder into your body? Well, you can't, right? Well, this stuff is being shipped over to our fine entrepreneurs or our drug dealers here in the U.S., okay, and they're taking these powders. They're not pharmacists, so these guys and gals don't have access to pharmaceutical-grade oils. So they start mixing this stuff with baby oil, Wesson oil, cooking oil, and ladies and gentlemen, you are reading correct. Some of this stuff is being mixed with motor oil, armor oil, and even horse urine. I had a call from a DE agent. Uh, it's been about two or three months ago now, and they did, they did a big raid on uh, an outfit uh, just north of Oklahoma, and uh, this guy was selling this stuff online. He was mixing it with horse urine. Horse urine is a little bit different consistency than human urine. It's a little bit more oily, okay? And, uh, but what, what he was saying was, you know, if this stuff is being distributed to kids or adults, males or females, it doesn't matter. There's no 800 number on the back of the drug that you can call and complain, hey, this guy ripped me off with, you know, horse pee, okay? Or, I mean, just like, let's, let's call the local police department. I was trying to buy some illegal steroids, and the guy ripped me off and sold me horse urine. Okay, it, so it doesn't really work, and, and even the DE agents tell you, you know, the stuff available on the street is absolute garbage. Okay, um, and if you go deep into the black market, uh, what the DEA will tell you is the way the Chinese will market this stuff from one company to the other is that they're designed to beat any North American-based uh, steroid testing regimens. So, you know, let me take you guys over to one of the laboratories that's actually making the raw materials. Because most people would assume, you know, you're buying an antibiotic steroid, I'm injecting it in my body with a needle and syringe, so it's probably, you know, a guy in a lab coat, gray beard, you know, like the guy you see at, you know, CVS or Walgreens. Well, I mean, I don't think you see, your, your, you know, your, your pharmacist parking the Harley Davidson inside the store, okay, and you get the guy with his little moped leaning against the back. Okay, so not the most sanitary conditions, but they do have quality control, which is good news. Okay, as many of you can see here, it's, you know, some of the sheets that you might have slept on last night and they just take it and throw it over the drugs and that's what keeps the bugs off of it. Okay, and, and I have some pictures and, and uh, if you guys would like, uh, we can tailor these programs specifically for each school and I can show you more pictures of some of the items that they actually pull out of here from wood chips to metal chips to glass to bolts and even screws. So the drugs come over here, and it ends up in one of our laboratories here in the United States. And I use the word laboratories very loosely. But this was one of the largest ones that was busted up a few years ago. And if any of you guys have ever gone through a methamphetamine uh, lecture, this is very similar. Okay, the white powder that you see up here is no more than steroid powder. You know, and, and we're thinking about a drug that we're taking and injecting directly into our bodies when you have black mold growing down the hallway. I don't think anybody in there would go take a shower, and I hope none of you guys, I hope none of your dorm rooms look this way. Okay, I had roommates that were almost this dirty, but uh, I mean, this is pretty disgusting stuff. However, once they're done with a vial and a laser printer, it looks like pretty legitimate drugs. Maybe this, the same stuff that your favorite athlete might be taking. But they go out to their distribution center, which might be the garage, or in this case here on the right, the master bedroom. But I mean, you can imagine the mice and cockroaches, you know, that walk around these places. But per pretty interesting stuff. Raise your hand in here if you can remember, back in 2008, Mattel had a huge toy recall. Anybody remember that? Anybody remember why? Well, what did you say? Rat poisoning, and, and it was lead in the paint, 
lead, right? So Mattel, being a big company, was having issues you know, with the lead in their paint because if little Timmy chewed on a toy train, what heavy metals can do to our brain, okay? So my dad likes to refer to them as the meatheads. You know, our fine drug dealing entrepreneur guys here, um, notice my sarcasm, they got together and said, look, if Mattel has a huge problem with contamination and we're getting our drugs from the same place, could it be some of the drugs that we're selling on the street? you know, uh, test positive for some of these heavy metals as well. So they went and hired an independent lab technician to test their stuff. And lo and behold, 21% of the steroids that were being manufactured and distributed in the black market tested positive for lead, mercury, zinc, tin, and arsenic. Okay, and this is the type of stuff that you're purchasing, dire injecting directly into your bodies. And if you don't know what heavy metals do to your brain, again, Google's a very powerful tool put it in there and I'm sure somebody's answered the question before and you can read about it all day long. So where could the heavy metals possibly come from? Pictures tell you a thousand words, right? Let's go right back over to the laboratories where you see these fine gals up here in their camouflage rubber suits mixing up some of the raw materials with probably a broom that was just laying against the floor there, okay? But draw your own conclusions as far as where the heavy metal contaminants can come from. So how much are users taking, right? Because no matter what it is we talk about, whether it's sleeping, eating, working out, studying, more is always better. And remember we talked about the guy whose man, or Nate was talking about the guy whose man's arms exploded, okay? This was a guy here, you could actually go on YouTube and read about him, that was using this stuff, became very addicted, you know, started dealing it. So the next thing you know, he's like, well, you know, uh, you know I, was, I was trying to get bigger. So the, the videos are very gruesome if you do watch it. But he actually started injecting this stuff directly into his biceps. Ended up getting an infection. Here was him after, you know, he got busted. But his arms are permanently like that. But it was an addiction of wanting to have those arms, you know, wanting to be big like that. Just like you see the cute gal over here. It's an excessive, okay? This is an excessive use of these types of drugs. So, more is better, right? So remember, this stuff, this stuff is you know, synthetically made, prescribed by a doctor. Um, and if any of you in here have a parent that's a pharmacist, a doctor that can prescribe these type of drugs, go ask them, say, you know, mom, dad, cousin, whatever you are, what's the typical daily dose of an anabolic steroid? And I've had medical doctors listen to this or be in the room, and it's nice that they can validate it. But it's about 5 to 10 milligrams a day. Okay, and what a user will do is they'll stack these drugs at much higher levels, okay, using stuff that's going to either bulk their muscles up or cut the fat off their body. Uh, then they'll cycle it 6 to 12 weeks on, 10 to 12 weeks off, typically using it before a season to get prepared or using it to help from an injury. And then pyramiding is very interesting, especially in the male body, and this is what happened with my brother. The second synthetic testosterone hits the male body, the brain says, wow, we're done puberty. Okay, there's that word again. Okay, we're in adulthood. We, don't, we, don't, we no longer need to produce it. So you'll start on a low cycle, you'll bring it to a peak, and then you'll taper it off. Well, my brother was in the middle of a cycle and his medical doctor told him, hey man, you just need to quit this stuff, cold turkey. And if you talk to any of these guys that study bodybuilders, that, that work with these guys that are using high level dosages, he'll tell you, they'll tell you that's a prescription for death because Taylor at 16, 17 years old is literally walking around with zero testosterone in his body. And if you can go back to being those days, you know, where your, your mood swings go back and forth, imagine the depression being that severe and then tapering it off at the end. Okay, so that's, you know, what pyramiding is. Um, but, but what do steroids cost? You know, it, it, I've told you about the stories of human growth hormone, and some people buy this stuff for pretty cheap, but it's about $200 to $500 a cycle. My brother is spending uh, a little over $300 for his drugs, and if we have any, you know, I know we, got a, we have some parents in the room, but um, my brother was purchasing his at the local YMCA, which most people would think is the safest place in the world for a kid to go work out, uh, but uh, it, this stuff is happening in gyms everywhere. I mean, you go where all the free weights are, you know, you start talking to some of these guys and gals, oh, I like the way your shoulders look or your back looks. All of a sudden the conversation, once they get trust, will tell you where they're getting your them body from. body can only handle so much testosterone in it, at which point it starts converting it over to estrogen. Everybody in here know what estrogen is, right? It's a female hormone, if not, ask some of these girls. All right? So you start growing breast tissue. 
okay? And to give you, give you a real live story, um, one of the guys uh, that's a consultant for us was a bodybuilder in the 80s. Uh, he was telling me he was going up for a set and, uh, you know, to show off his biceps and his chest. He, you know, had his Vaseline all over him. He was real dark. And he said milk started running out of his nipples. I said, Mike, dude, no, like there's, that's, you know, I don't have any words for that. He's like, dude, it's very common amongst guys, and it's not talked about. He's like, if you don't believe me, just go on YouTube. You have access to it, and there's actually a, a, a big gentleman, and he actually will squeeze his nipples and it lactates. And that's a very, very serious um, side effect of using these drugs, okay? You get some of these guys that start getting breast cancer, okay? Um, extreme, extreme, very serious side effects. But then you got testicular atrophy, okay? We all understand what that means. The testicles start shrinking up to the size of raisins. And one of the reasons is, is your testicles help in the production of tes the testosterone to tell the body produce testosterone. And what a doctor will tell you is if you're not going to use them, you're going to lose them, okay? Uh, lower sperm counts, the really did impotence, potential birth defects, prostate growth, okay? This is not something I recommend you Google or at least click images on, but if you don't understand what a prostate exam is, okay? Go ask your coach, call a parent, go ask an adult, and they'll tell you, and see if that's something you want to start having by the time you get out of college. I can promise you it's not something you want to start having even when you're 40 and you're supposed to start having them. Uh, premature balding, we talked about over here um, uh, the severe acne case. So I want to show you, not that the guy's tan or his muscles went away, but this is after five or six surgeries, some skin grafts. This is after about 12 or 13. Okay, again, a very severe case of acne, but very real. Okay, what happened to his muscles? Where'd they go? Uh, but remember, we got, we got our, our, our pretty ladies in the room that like using this stuff, uh, you know, whether it's to shave fat, to bulk up. But we got girls that'll start growing male type body hair, you know, and, and as, I, as I tell the young boys at the ballpark, it's like if you want to. You know, kiss one of these cute girls on the cheek, or you know, you go kiss your mom, and it's like kissing your dad, or you know, your buddy hadn't shaved all weekend, right? You know, because girls will actually start growing a beard. My friend Melinda will tell you um, there are some girls that will have to shave before competition. Uh, but male pattern baldness, as you can see in this this cute gal down here, okay, just the receding hairline beginning. And to talk about the male pattern baldness, you know, a topic that was brought up in the very beginning. Uh, a friend of mine was using a multi-level marketing company. Um, you know, she's very in shape, works out, runs every day, you know, has never gotten into anabolic steroids. I remember I was coming back from Reno, I was sitting at the airport. She said, Donna, you know, I had to go to the hospital. I, I know what you do for a living. I, I've got to share my story with you so you can tell people. She woke up in the morning to put her hair in a ponytail to go, go out for a morning run, and her hair started falling out in clumps. So the first, first thought is, I have cancer. I've got to go to the hospital. Well, it was actually an excess level of a couple of different things in the supplements she was using um, which caused her hair to fall out. So we can draw our conclusions as to what was in those supplements, but you got things like a deepened voice. If you listen to Dion, after a five-week cycle, her voice changed from using these drugs. Okay, breast shrinkage, abnormal menstrual cycles. The birth defects here, uh, th this is actually very recent. Some of these females that are getting into these drugs, whether it's to burn fat or even to bulk up, are having female fetuses with male-like characteristics. Okay, so as early as be in the field thing. And ladies and gentlemen, the very last one here, I don't have to explain to you what's going on, okay? I think you understand. Um, my my brother-in-law-to-be uh, was using some supplements in high school, ended up having to uh, have breast reduction surgery. He's like, well, what happens to the girls? So I started showing him some pictures online, and he's like, you gotta be kidding me. So again, these are very, very real um, side effects that these drugs can do to your body. Just to summarize this slide here, experts will agree uh, there is no organ in your body that steroids don't negatively affect, okay? And they are showing to lower overall life expectancy. Uh, but you get things like uh, hypertension, you know, and, and a lot of people like, well, I'm just going to use it to get ready for the season. Just a short cycle, I'll be ready. Well, now all of a sudden, you're putting, um, chance of injury is going to be higher on your tendons, ligaments, and muscles, okay? So you see, especially in the NFL or during the steroid era, with medical advances, how more people were getting hurt. Uh, bad breath is a very interesting one. Most people ask about that, and I've got a video where my dad talks more about it, but if you've ever been around people that have had a couple adult beverages, let's, beer is a great example because it smells one way coming out of a can or a glass, 
or even wine, okay? You know, people go smell the wine, but if somebody's had more than a couple of cocktails, you can smell it coming out of their breath. It's like, dude, you know, get away. Okay, the same way law enforcement, when they walk up to a car of somebody that's been drinking, they can smell it prior to getting to the door. They don't have to ask you if you've been drinking or not. It's the same thing with steroids, but they say your body emits, it smells like kind of like uh, pinto beans or like, you know, uh, black beans, okay, being cooked. And we, we've had some of the athletic trainers at some of the colleges that have, have been users themselves and have said, hey, man, what cycle are you using? What are you, they're like, what are you talking about? Like, I can smell it on you, but it's, a, you know, very like that. But users can become addicted. Anybody in here wrestling fans? Anybody used to be wrestling fans? You all know it's fake, though, right? Okay, all right, we're good. Because sometimes I spoil that for these kids at the, at the ballparks, and they get upset, and it's almost a brawl. But if you look at this is a very good group to say, look, a lot of these guys, it's pretty safe to say they're using anabolic steroids. Again, you know, it's, it's a body image is not achieved without the use of illegal drugs, yet look at the age most of these guys are passing away for, for being such a healthy group of guys, okay? And one of the reasons is, is because if you abuse anabolic steroids, you're 12 times more likely to die of a heart attack than the average male or female, okay? And you could even put some of the WWE divas up there. Psychological effects, remember we're altering the hormones in our body. Guys and gals, adding testosterone so your mood swings change. Okay, if you can imagine going through the, the whole puberty thing again, you know, you get your, you know, within a 10 minutes you can be mad, upset, glad, happy, sad, depressed. Okay, well the pendulum swings a lot further. So you get things such as roid rage, severe depression, okay. Uh, what happens when you stop? The first four to six weeks can be the worst. It can persist up to over a year um, after taking these drugs. So we, you know, suicide attempts. You know, we, and, and it's, it's upsetting and, and it's part of my job, but I have to talk to these parents or family members after this type of thing happens. So we're very big proponents of testing, but education is key. And I mean, if you guys ever have questions or want to get any more information that you can talk to your peers about, please contact us. Uh, but you know, even if it weren't against the rules, we need to be educating on how dangerous these drugs can be. Um, because I can tell you some of your peers and if you have you know younger brothers sisters or friends that are going up through middle school and high school at the time if you're not educating and we're not educating them somebody at the gym is giving them the wrong information uh, but you know again think beyond football think middle schools and high schools uh, we work with uh, very close partners with Dick Buckus his son's actually on our board really good friend of mine um, but when they did a study with Procter & Gamble 85 percent of our kids report they've never had a parent teacher or coach talk with them about the danger of these drugs so we're working on changing that again I'm not your coach I'm not your parent up here trying to lecture you make healthy choices you know look for signs and symptoms of use on your teams challenge your friends talk to your coach you know uh, you know get with a team physician and I'm very serious about this last topic if you have any friends that are out there that maybe tell you they're thinking about hurting themselves taking their own lives even if they're joking get them help and I can tell you Hours after I got home, I was in Philadelphia when I found out my brother passed away. And I flew home, and you know, some of the friends were at his house. They're crying. They're like, you know, he had been joking about this for a while. Like, haha, it was, you know. But he was always a joking type guy. But that was his way of asking, you know, I need help. So again, it's it's better to lose a friendship and say, hey, you know, I don't I, I don't think that's funny than than actually lose a friend. You know, we offer these assembly programs. We're going to be doing one in each and every one of your schools. Uh, we also have the e-learning programs available, so if any of your peers miss this program, uh, and, and we're going to be working with the ADs and athletic trainers, have them email me directly or email us directly. I'd be happy to give them. We've got online training because we want every single uh, athlete at your school to go through this, so we'd be happy to provide that. We're on both social networks, Facebook, you know, come find us at Taylor Hooten. Uh, if, if you're on Twitter, you'll see, you know, we, we tweet and put a bunch of pictures, especially right now as we're traveling these ballparks, so please come follow us on there. Uh, but I wanted to thank you very much for your time today and, and the support of the Gulf South Conference and having us out. But raise your hand here if you guys learned something today you didn't know before you walked in the door. Outstanding.